Welcome to Activities for Multilingual Families, a channel where we share ideas to help you foster your languages in a fun and compelling way. I'm Ute. I'm Anna. I'm Yoshito. In this video, we're talking about reading aloud with our children, from when they're babies until they're teens or young adults. Reading aloud is one of the most powerful things we can do to support language and literacy development. In principle, reading aloud is just that, reading a text out loud, a poem, a story, the news. But if you want to read aloud with our children and make the most of it, we must consider a few things. It must be engaging. We need to share texts that are age appropriate and that interests the children and us. We can provide some choices, but we can also let the children choose and share with us what interests them. If a text is too difficult to understand, too easy, or if no one is interested in the topic, there will be no joy in reading, which is one of the main reasons to do it. When reading aloud, we bring text to life by using the right intonation, making characters' voices, speaking louder or softer, whispering, uh, we not only make the experience enjoyable, but we model fluent reading to our children. Maintenant, reste tranquille et parle tout bas, sinon tu vas réveiller l'énorme géant qui ronfle de l'autre côté de la page. Le voilà, comme il est grand Écoute le ronfler Je parie tu n'oses pas crier. Bouh Vite, tourne la page, il ne faut pas qu'ils nous entendent. Crois-tu qu'on l'a réveillé Ouvre doucement le volet et dis-moi s'il dort toujours. Ah we also model understanding because uh, we can pause, talk about the text, the pictures, ask questions. And we can wonder about what we know and what we don't know about the text and how to work things out. And all of this help our children see how or what to do to understand the text. Et on fait quoi On fait tout exploser Mais non, n'importe quoi Tu as d'autres des idées débiles comme ça C'est pas débile. Débile, regarde, qu'est-ce qu'il y avait <rire> sur la tête Tu crois que dire quoi Euh, dump. Dump, oui. T'arrêtes de taper, toi <rire> <rire> oui, ça veut dire bête. Tu as d'autres des idées bêtes comme ça Ok Reading aloud with our children can happen in different ways. Either we read aloud, or our children do, or we take turns. The focus here is to listen to the one who is reading. When our children are confident readers, reading with them means to explore new texts and subjects together on a deeper level. We can focus on developing ideas, learning new words, and comparing or bridging our languages. A little tip. Let's make sure not to overdo it. Don't ask too much, expect too much. We can let our children guide us with regards to the pace of the reading, the length of the activity, and the focus on the text and the understanding. Allowing our children to share their readings is an important step. It makes it more compelling for them and it shows our interest in what they find important and interesting. We can follow their way to explore books, websites, platforms in a way that allows us to discover their way to approach resources and build their knowledge. For a multilingual family, reading aloud is like a window into our roots, our culture, and into other cultures and languages we include in our readings. We will experience the rhythm, the rhymes, the sound, and the wordplay in each language. Of course, we want our children to be exposed as much as possible to their home languages, but it's also important to let this read aloud time be a way to empower our children in all their languages and to let them be proud of all of them. So it's okay to read in any language you and your children feel comfortable with and enjoy.
when we nurture a habit of reading together, enjoying a story, talking about what you learn, wondering, laughing, we are nurturing a positive and affectionate relationship with languages and with reading. Reading aloud also means spending time together. It's a chance not only for us parents, but other adults in your child's life to grow a connection with them. Children who read are often read to or exposed to a huge variety of words, which they are actually less likely to learn on a day-to-day -day basis, especially in their home languages. So reading also contributes to a child's growing knowledge of the world. This background knowledge helps children make connections and understand what they read better. And in turn, it helps them learn new things. So now that this has been explained, let's have a look at different ways we can read with our children across age groups. When we think about reading with babies, many of us might not know how or why do it in the first place. We might think a baby doesn't understand what we're saying or is not following the plot of a story, but here's what a baby is doing when you read to them. They're listening to the sounds of our language. They're listening to their favorite voice and feeling safe. Let me show you some examples of what you can read to your baby. Books of contrasting colors that babies can distinguish better. Soft books that they can grab, play, Chew on. Sturdy books that won't get ripped. Bath books. And other kinds of interactive books with flaps, with textures, with all kinds of different things. Most baby books consist of pictures only. So reading with the baby is mostly looking at those pictures, describing them, talking about them, making animal sounds, touching the textures. And one big advantage is that you can read them in any language you like. This is a busy time. Children at this age are often learning to walk and then run, climb, dance. They're learning to talk, to go to the potty, to regulate their emotions and many other things. So reading aloud with our preschool children and our toddlers can be a wonderful tool to teach them new words in our languages, to talk about relatable things like going to school or becoming a big brother or sister, to foster their print awareness. When we look at the words on the page, we draw their attention to how the written language works. They understand that those words on the page are related to what we say. To foster their phonological awareness. Children's books often use rhyme, repetition, made up words. We can enjoy that and we can also play our own games with alliteration and rhyme and made up words. When reading with our toddlers or preschool children, let's keep some things in mind. Their attention span is short. They like to move. So you might not finish a story and it's okay. Or you might need to read the story many, many times and it's also okay. Follow their lead encourage them to choose a book and if it's not a book in a language you can read you can translate as you go you can tell the story as you remember it or as you see it on the pictures and you can also encourage your child to tell it together with you as our children start to be able to read more and more on their own it's very important to keep the habit of reading with them and to them for all the benefits we've mentioned before. And in addition to that, I'd like to mention that by living abroad and being schooled abroad, a child is going to acquire many more words in their school language. In their home language, they'll be able to talk about what they did with their friends or what they ate, anything to do with daily lives. But unless they're exposed to other topics, 
uh, they won't encounter other words. And this is where books come in really handy and where we play a key role as well. So by read while reading, uh, we can explain and clarify new words that are going to enter the, the vocabulary. Personne dans la chambre de Nola. Pour vous que la clé soit là. Ouf, Allié, quel soulagement. Vous savez, c'est quoi un soulagement C'est quoi Ça veut dire. On se fait ouf C'est. Oh, quel soulagement Ouf When our children learn to read in their additional language first, this means if they are schooled in a language that is not one of our home languages, they either learn to read in their home languages with the help of us parents, but not all parents are teachers and learning to read does not come naturally like speaking. Or they learn to read in our home languages at one point as part of their curriculum at school or through weekend schools. Once our children are independent and skilled readers in the school language, we can encourage them more to share texts also in our home languages. But we need to be aware that their reading skills might differ considerably across their languages. So there might be a discrepancy between the school and the home languages. Our children will feel more confident, read faster, be more motivated in reading in the school language than the home language or languages. Furthermore, reading aloud makes them more aware of what they understand and what they don't understand. They might struggle with pronouncing new words, finding where to pause, what word to emphasize, and they might realize whilst reading aloud that they don't understand part of the text. So this can lead to frustrations and be the reason for them to refuse to read aloud in that language. That's fine. This activity should not be used to control or monitor our children's progress in our language, but as a way to connect and give our children the opportunity to share their readings if they want to and if they are ready to do so. So if we want to encourage our children to also read in their home languages, we can do this by scaffolding what they have learned at school. For example, if they were learning about, I don't know, atoms in elements and compounds or electron configuration or how to analyze prose fiction or Shakespeare or any subject they are studying at the moment and that they want to share, we can read a text with them aloud in our home language. We can help them find the appropriate resources and sites, books, magazines, newspapers, etc. in our language. And this little exercise can help them consolidate the knowledge about the subject in both of our languages. And they might even find similarities or differences in describing topics in their languages that can also lead to very interesting metalinguistic discussions. Here are a few tips on what we can do. We can invite them to read aloud an easier text, one they already read on their own silently, and they feel more confident reading out loud. Schicke mir ein Blatt doch von einem Strauch, der nicht mehr als eine halbe Stunde von deinem Haus wächst. Dann musst du gehen und wirst stark und ich bedanke mich für das hübsche Blatt. We can also find texts that are compelling and where our children understand about 80 or more percent of the text. This will help them feel much more confident. And let them choose the text. The poems, newspapers, essays, non-fiction books, online articles, posts on social media, anything. Please focus mainly on the listening instead of modeling how words are pronounced or intervening. We can let our children just try out different pronunciations, the pace, and let themselves discover how to read. By listening to our children read aloud to us, we will notice when parts of the text are unclear and can provide help if our children are open to it by finding synonyms, antonyms, provide some examples and generally clarify their understanding. Insbesondere geht es dabei um den Schnee, der auf den Pisten und Läupen... Läupen, das ist, wo man äh, Langlauf läuft. Okay. Läupen liegen wird. In den vergangenen Monaten wurde mehrfach berichtet, dass 49 Millionen Gallonen Wasser benötigt werden, 
um genügend Schnee für die olympischen Alpinpisten zu erzeugen. When our children read in multiple languages, they will notice that some languages are easier to read, like uh, the most transparent ones, like uh, Spanish and Italian, for example, where the correspondence between writing and pronunciation is clearer, opposed to others that are more difficult to decipher, like uh, English or French. Just think about the many ways that O-U-G-H can be pronounced in English. So rough, plow, through, thought, uh, cough, hiccup, laugh, uh, or the many ways that the O sound can be rendered in French. This means that if we help our children learn to read in our home languages, and these are more packed, like uh, English and French, we might need to dedicate a little bit more time to it. Be more patient for our children to stay motivated to try again and again if they want to. When the home language and the school language do not share the same script, decoding the letters and the words is an additional challenge. So in languages such as Korean, Arabic or Greek that use different symbols to represent sounds uh, of, the, of the language, the main effort for us parents is really to expose our children to the script. If your child still reads slowly, reading together helps remove the frustration that they can build up when they read so slowly and they can't access the meaning fast enough. So you can start, for example, by reading most of the story, most of the text, and then your child reads a little bit, then you read again a big chunk and a little bit for your child, and little by little, you, you, uh, you're you going to switch. So you read less and less, and your child is going to read more and more as they get more confident. This will create a better uh, reading experience and has more chances to carry on. For languages uh, like Japanese or Chinese that use ideograms, so there, there are characters that represent an idea. It's not a sound, it's an idea. Uh, the principle is the same. The exposure is the main thing. But the additional um, tip I would give you is to try to stick to the same theme or same topics or read a series of books uh, because your child will encounter the same characters over and over and will become more and more familiar. How do you read with your children? Let us know in the comments here below. And if you like this video, please click subscribe and the bell icon to be notified for every new video we post. Have fun with languages! languages.